how to instantly improve your nutrition for fat loss. Yeah, so I'm Jake. He's Jake or Big Dave. I know you say Jake, but I say Big Dave. Um, <laughs> and we're here to give you some non lecturing non sciencey fitness advice to hopefully get you out of a rut and hopefully get you seeing some progression with your training, your fat loss, and get you into the shape of your life. Yeah, and hopefully help you realize you don't need to avoid sugar because it's not going to kill you. But yeah, so we're going to jump into how to instantly improve your nutrition for fat loss. Basically, we're going to talk you through the most common mistakes we see in our assessment weeks with clients. Yeah, so just to give you a bit of an insight into that, I think we've spoken about in previous episodes. So if you've not watched those or listened to those, go listen. Um, But yeah, so when a client comes on, one of the things that we do is... We do an assessment week. Now, an assessment week is a really important part of the process because an assessment week basically allows us to see what your current nutrition looks like, your current training, your current movement levels, your current eating patterns, you know, where you're going wrong. And actually, not just where you're going wrong, where you're going right Mm. as well. And from that, then we can start to build out what the best route of, of kind of action and the best plan of action will be for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So one of the first steps, we sit down, we have a look at your nutrition that you've been tracking so the calories macros for that carbs protein fats and then we'll more than that we have a look at the the diet diary right and we see what foods you're actually eating and generally i would say 80 percent of the time at least we see the same sort of mistakes person to person that's probably because of the kind of people we attract into the business because you know we have a a set kind of client i suppose who yeah like us (laughs) And, and, and also as well like this isn't these aren't mistakes that the person who's logged it in doesn't realize they're making like nine times out of 10 people are saying the call. I know I'm eating like shit. Yeah. Like I know I could be eating better. So it's not as though they're like, I feel like I'm eating great. And then we look at it. Well, they wouldn't be getting in touch with us, you know, so exactly. there's, there's obviously, you know, people recognize that they need to brush up on things. Yeah. Otherwise they wouldn't be coming into coaching, but yeah, we tend to see the, the same kind of thing. So for me personally, and you'll probably echo this, um, it's low on protein, yeah. um, almost nine times out of 10 proteins yeah. down. Yeah. Um, you tend to see maybe too much snacking, people not having decent meals and just kind of grazing on bits mm. throughout the day. For me, with people with kids, it's like picking it a bit, bit of the, the kids' the kids' food yeah, off yeah, their yeah. plates is a big one. And then at the weekend, you tend to see people just completely go to shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a funny, nicely. Yeah. And you always get it. Do, do you often find that you'll get the WhatsApp message before you come to do it? And they'll be like, just so you know, yeah, this happened at the weekend. So if it looks terrible, this is why. And it's like, yeah. that's cool. But that's probably well, that's, what's been happening consistently for Yeah, and I, but what I say to people is like, that's good. Like, I need to see that so that yeah, I can yeah. understand how to help you straight away. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's almost better for, for, for us from a point of view of if we can see a lot of initial mistakes, especially if they're easy fixes, it means we can do a lot more for you. If someone comes to us and they're like, their diet diary looks spot on, their calories are spot on, but they're still not seeing progress, that's when it's more of a challenge for us to be like, okay, well, if this is correct... Mm-hmm. What the hell's going on? Exactly. Uh, if, you, if you turned up with perfect nutrition, we'd be like, well, that's not a normal sort of <laughs> week, is it? Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't need to lose body fat or whatever. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a really good way for us to kind of get to grips with, with where you're at. Um, and we're basically going to tell you how to get some early wins. Yeah. So, the first thing, like you said, low protein. Typically, what I'll tend to see is if someone has breakfast, it'll be like, cereal or a cereal bar or voice broke then yeah. i've just yeah. hit puberty uh or a couple of <laughs> slices yeah <laughs> literally or a couple of slices of toast or something like that like that generally tends to be the breakfast or maybe a bit of yogurt or something yeah which is slightly better but still not amazing and that tends to be it so the first thing that we'll tend to say is right you need some protein with your breakfast in whatever shape or form that takes it could be just a bigger portion of zero percent fat greek yogurt or five percent fat greek yogurt depending on your calories it could be protein powder it could be bacon eggs whatever it is it could be, it could yeah. be salmon it could be but anything. again we're trying to tweak it so it's not changing your, your breakfast exactly. completely so yeah. just just because this is literally the last onboarding that i did but yesterday i onboarded a client and his current breakfast was generally pretty good it was oats with i think it was almond milk um with blueberries raspberries chia seeds cinnamon like it's a really good mm. like, quality breakfast lots of fiber lots of carbs lots of lots of goodness but there's no protein. So I literally said, add a scoop of protein into yeah. your rows. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that simple. And like, that's what, we, that's what we're talking about when we see these low hanging fruits. We can just grab that. That's going to make, it's a, a very subtle tweak that you need to make to your day, which is going to add about 30 seconds to your prep time. 
and you've already boxed off a good chunk of your protein. Yeah, yeah, so. literally that. And then from that point on, it's just a case of what we'll say is, okay, just make sure that every main meal you have after that point, there is some form of, it's built around some form of protein. Yeah. And it can be as simple as that. So we could, it could literally be like, I'll have some clients sometimes who the, the, they'll pick up like a sandwich and some crisps for lunch or something like that. And I'll literally just be like, okay, well, could we potentially pick something else up along the way that is just going to add a little bit of extra protein in? Like, could you buy a packet of chicken and just add some chicken into that sandwich? Well, my lunch today, so for example... I saw that you had it, yeah. yeah. So, you ate it on the way here, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, well, I, I didn't have time to prep yesterday because it was Thea's birthday, so I was just mm. like, I was all over the place. And actually, I've got a bit of meal prep at the moment, so that will we'll arrive and be there for when I get home today. So today, I was like, right, well, I'm on the go. Like, most people would stress about that. Like zero stress whatsoever. I, I walked into Sainsbury's this morning. We got a salmon poke bowl thing, mm-hmm. which was like full of like color and greens and stuff, but it was very low protein. It was like 15 grams. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, that's 400 calories. I then grabbed a packet of cut chicken. Yeah. So my meal was like 600 calories in total, 60 odd grams of protein, lots of fiber, lots of color in there. Like perfect. Yeah. It doesn't need to be more complicated than that. No. No, I did the same thing. I went up to earlier this year, drove up to Edinburgh um, for a member of Stag Do and picked something up on the way there. And it was literally, I picked up from the shop. I had a lot of calories at this point, but I think I picked up a sandwich, some pineapple and a packet of sliced chicken. Yeah. And that was it. And you might hear that and be like, oh, that's a bit weird just eating sliced chicken out of a packet. It's not the nicest thing in the world. It's, you know, it's, but it's not meant to be. At the end of the day, if you're wanting to do something you've never done before with like a result, you're going to have to do a couple of things that you've potentially not done before. And that doesn't mean that you're going to have to do that every single day. Yeah. That's just a really easy swap to make if you find that you're out and about and you need to pick something easy up. Yeah. And should we say the benefits? But do we need to say the benefits of protein? Do people know? No, I mean, we, I think most people know, obviously, when it comes to when it comes to changing your physique, obviously protein is going to help you build, retain lean muscle tissue, yeah. which you need. But even more than that, when it comes to dieting, keeps you fuller for longer, reduces hunger, improves satiety, like makes dieting much, much easier. They're the main things. And yeah. when I onboard someone, I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm upping your protein to X amount. And generally I won't up it that much initially because no. obviously baby steps and you've got to kind of, if I was to overwhelm someone, if someone's eating 80 grams of protein a day and I say, right, 160, they're going to lose their head and they're not going to be able to yeah. do it. So i back up to 120, 110. Yeah. Let's start there and just build you up over time. But... The main reason that I say, obviously, is most people probably realize that, you know, protein is good for building muscle and things. You will have seen your bodybuilders talking about it, et cetera. But the main reason that we do it, as Jake just said, is because it will fill you up. Yeah. You're not going to be as hungry, which whilst you're dieting is pretty fucking important. (laughs) (laughs) So many check-ins I get sometimes when people are in the first few weeks and they're like, I'm really, really full. Like I'm struggling to get all my food in. And I'm like, fantastic like if Brilliant. if your biggest problem when you're dieting is that you're too full yeah that's not a bad place to be and that's that. generally because we've increased their protein and naturally when you increase someone's protein they start making better decisions around the nutrition anyway yeah so it isn't just the protein it's like more food volume in general so like yeah more fruits more veggies stuff like that but it's you know it's that reason in it so people although they're eating less food yeah they're eating more volumes of food yeah. and better quality food therefore you feel fuller Think about when you eat shit, right? When I eat shit like a Mackey's or something like that, I'm always hungry like half an hour after. Yeah. yeah. It's because there's no, it's just shite quality food. A lot of calories, but, you know, there's nothing to it, you know? So it's not saying you can't eat that stuff, by the way, but, you know, when you are eating lots of it, you're never really actually kind of satisfied. No, and more often with that, like, when you get those sort of convenience-based foods, fast foods, because they're so salty as well, you then get that Mm. sweet tooth craving afterwards to balance it out. Yeah. Which happens all the time. And that's one of the other things we get when, because well, that's one of the most common things is processed foods and convenience foods. We'll see people make, pretty much have them two out of three meals a day at mm-hmm. least. And as soon as you clear that up and you maybe just have it one, even just once a day to begin with and you start cooking more of your own food, within the first couple of weeks, you'll see that your bloating reduces, your water weight will massively come down. So you'll typically drop quite a lot of weight in the first few weeks because your mm-hmm. body's just flushing out all the excess water it's been holding because of inflammation and salt and one thing and another. Yeah. And they'll typically say as well, I'm not getting the same cravings that I used to get. Like, yeah. I don't feel like I need that chocolate bar in the evening now or after my tea or anything like that. And it's literally just because you're balancing your salt a little bit better yeah. by eliminating those processed foods out. Yeah. Other issues, I suppose, we, we literally just did a whole 
episode on this. We won't go into too much detail, but the weekends, obviously, you know, you, yeah, you'll tend to see, obviously, some people might... In fact, it's not even the weekends. <laughs> it probably goes like, Monday looks really good. <laughs> Tuesday's okay. Wednesday's all right. Thursday's starting to go a bit shit. Friday's like, okay, fat Friday's in the office. 50-50, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, right, Saturday and Sunday are just complete right off. Yeah. And that's a really common theme as well. Um, so yeah, like obviously go back and listen to, to the, the other episode. But, yeah, you know, yeah. Weekends, um, sort them out. <laughs> yeah, and then the other thing we see on that is people just don't really drink water sometimes at all. <laughs> it's weird. It's it's not weird because it is very common for people to not drink enough water, but it's weird that something so important can be just completely disregarded. And, and what we'll say is, again, it's the same thing. The second you start drinking more water or enough water, you will hold less water and you'll drop a lot of weight in water. Yeah. Well, what we just think about when we do photo shoots. So when we prep someone for a photo shoot, generally speaking, in that in that week, in the build up to it, we'll get them to drink a shit ton of water, mm. you know, lots of it, and people are and eat a lot of carbohydrates. But people are like, okay, okay, so like six, seven liters of water, whatever. It's like okay, waking up the day after lighter than they ever have been because they're just flushing out all the the, the water that they've been holding essentially. So um, yeah, just you know, I mean, listen, we're not your fucking parents. You know, just drink more water. You know, just... I literally say to the clients, I'm like, really easy. Have a glass of water before you do anything else on the morning and then just have a glass of water with each meal. If you do that and then just have a bottle to sip on through the day, you're easily going to hit two, two and a half yeah. litres a day, which for most people will probably be around enough. Yeah. For some, you might need a little bit of an extra bump. But if you can do that as a as a routine, and that's all it is, like, it's just a routine. Yeah. It's getting that routine in place. Habit, it? You'll notice I'd a big say, difference. I have a slightly different approach. Not have my bottle with me, but I get... Like I have a litre and a half bottle of water. I fill it all first thing in the morning. And then what I used to do, obviously it's just routine for me now, but what I used to do was have an alarm set for one o'clock and I'd make sure that I drank my bottle of water before one o'clock. And that alarm at one was my time to refill it. If I hadn't drank it, I'd make sure I got it fucking down me, go and refill it, make sure I drank that again in the afternoon. I train a bit more than most. So obviously three litres is probably kind of adequate for me. I could even go more. But... That again, you know, if you've got a bottle, fill it up in the morning, set an alarm for one o'clock. I guarantee after a few weeks, you won't need that alarm anymore because you'll just do it by, say, it'll be just your second nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on from that, it's we sort of already touched on it, but it's just fruit and veg intake. Yeah. Like it's a lot of the time non-existent. Again, for maybe two out of the three meals a day, there might be some in with the evening meal, but that's about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're not having enough fruit and veg, a, your digestion's not going to be happy. You're not getting your fi enough fiber in. You're probably going to feel quite bloated day to day. Energy levels will be shit. Energy levels will be crap. Hunger's probably going to be a little bit higher. Like, you're not going to be sleeping as well. well. Habits might not be great. Yeah, it's it has a massive, massive impact. Yeah. Um, as well as just like when you do get enough veg in, similar to protein, you just feel fuller. Yeah, yeah. Like dieting becomes a lot yeah. easier. And if you, if you are, because I do have the old client who comes in and I get it, right? You know, if you're someone who just doesn't like it, then, okay, that's fine. I mean, there'll be something that you like. So, so a lot of people don't like veg, but they like fruit, you know, or vi maybe vice versa. Generally, it's that way around. So, okay, cool. We'll just eat a bit more fruit if we need to. Um, I'm not 100% sold on these, but you can do a greens drink. Yeah, I have I very, very rarely I'll recommend them, but they can be useful sometimes, especially if you're on like really low calories. Yeah. Then a, a fruits and greens powder can be quite useful. Yeah, just to get something in. It's almost yeah. like a, an insurance policy. Yeah. <laughs> it is. No, it's no. just, it just tops things up. Make sure yeah. you're hitting a sort of a baseline of something. Yeah. Um, and then you know what I think some people will say here is, so, and, and you know what's actually really interesting? I'll just kind of touch on this. So when you give people, you know, this assessment week, I think some people are fucking hours at my first week of coaching. But after, after that week, because it can seem like a bit of a ball late for this first week. And I do understand why people would potentially think that because they're just keen to get started into that actual thing, right? But actually, it gives us more information as a coach. And, you know, we're not here to just give you a fucking copy and paste job and say like, okay, this is your height, this is your weight, this is your calories. It doesn't work like that. That's not coaching. That's that's just that's not coaching. So the reason we do it is so we can give you the best coaching experience, just to be really clear. But actually, people in, not enjoy it, but the, by the end of the week, they go, fucking hell. Didn't realize I was eating that many calories. Didn't realize my protein was that low. I've eaten no veggies, fuck. Like, and they start to, and because what you've got to remember is, is like information is free. Like most people know what they need to be doing and probably know what they should be doing and stuff. But you don't, you're not, you're not paying us for your information. You're paying us to, to coach you properly. To and get a result. To get a result. 
um, and to change your habits ultimately, and and sometimes just going through that week of realization. You I need think, that eye opener. Yeah, you need sometimes. that eye opener experience, mm. and and you do need it. And you'll find that actually, what people because we ask them to do like a client questionnaire as well. So you have like a lifestyle questionnaire and your assessment week and your lifestyle questionnaire. People will probably already say because I ask people, what do you think you can improve on, and they'll probably tell you what they can improve on anyway, mm. and. So the, the, for most people, because again, just to touch on like what people think coaching is, it isn't about the plan. For us as coaches, like we want to know, we, we're coaching you as the person, not, do you know, do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Am I making any sense here? So it's, yes, we want you to understand where you're going wrong, but actually we just need to meet you where you're at and kind of make subtle changes to things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I just thought I'd put a little bit of an insight into that. Yeah. It is just a case of that, just realizing sort of, having that realization of where you're currently at uh, maybe things aren't quite as good as what you thought they were when you see it black and white written down yeah. which is nine times out of ten it's what we get for and they message like fuck it, i didn't realize i was doing all yeah. that and then you can work from that and you can like, okay cool that's our baseline now let's just make some small tweaks from where you're currently at so i'll literally be like okay well this week we're going to have 20 extra grams of protein and i want you to add two handfuls of veg to each meal yeah and that might be it to begin with and then we build that up over time the other thing that we tend to see a lot in assessment weeks is caffeine intake mm -hmm. late in the evening. So it's very, very common for us to have see assessment weeks where it's like three, four, five cups of coffee a day, like well into the evening. Whilst for fat loss, this isn't directly going to have an impact, especially if you're tracking the milk and sugar in that coffee or tea, if you have it, it's massively going to affect your sleep. So one of the first things that we'll do is be like from 2 p.m. onwards, no caffeine decaf fine if you want a decaf coffee later on in the day or whatever absolutely fine but just make sure you're avoiding caffeine from two o'clock onwards because it's still going to be in your system six to eight hours later by the time you go into bed which it might and you get people like yeah but i can drink coffee and then go straight to sleep and it's like that's fine your it, sleep quality is not going to be as good whether you realize it or not your quality is not going to be as good and actually you're going to see an increase in cortisol which is what caffeine does which actually you know it has its benefits by the way like I'm having a monster now and I'm going to train not long after this and it's 12, I started drinking this at 12 o'clock. Perfect for me right now. But I was saying to you actually just before this, so Thea's been sleeping horrendously recently. So I've probably, without realising it, I've probably increased my, my caffeine intake a little bit. And I've, I said to you, you know, I've probably been having a little bit, a little bit later in the day than what I would like. So I've noticed, I've noticed that and I'm like, right, I need to fucking stop that straight away because... I think that's also on the nights that she does sleep better. I'm still not sleeping great because of that, you know? And it might not be directly because of that, but it's definitely having an impact. So, yeah, and, and sleep quality is massively important from a hunger perspective, from a recovery perspective. So, yeah, fucking... Yeah, if your sleep's not right, it makes fat loss so much harder from that. Yeah. Like I said, your energy's poor, your hunger's higher, your cravings are higher. Um, and it becomes a bit of like a, a negative sort of dependency cycle, especially if you're someone who has like a pre-workout in the evening after work to train and you're having like a big caffeine loaded pre-workout. You then train, you then go home, have your tea, you crash from it. You then wake up the next morning having not had a great night's sleep. Even though you might have slept for six hours, your quality is probably going to have been quite poor. You wake up feeling groggy as shit, feeling really bad. Under recovered. Have a coffee straight away. Then you need another one mid morning, then a can of monster at lunch. And then you're having another stim based pre workout by the time you get to the gym again in the evening because you feel even more tired than the day before. And then it just gets worse and worse. And then over time, you need to start having more and more caffeine because the amount that you've been yeah. having stops having doesn't, the same It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and in that case, I'm like, right, we need to cut this out for like one to two weeks. Yeah. It'll be tough, but we need to cut this out for one to two weeks. Almost reset again. And reset it. And when people do that, like after the first few days of even sometimes I'll have like a couple of headaches and just feel really yeah. groggy and like cloudy. They're like, I feel so much better. Like my energy's better. I feel good on the morning. I'm waking up ready to go. And it's if you get to that point, it, you need a hard reset. Something I stopped doing was, um, so I used to have a coffee like first thing, and I still have one early, like early on in the morning, but I've started pushing it back ever so slightly. So I'll wake mm. up and I'll try to leave it about an hour or so now before I have my first coffee. Um, and I, I found that's, that's made a massive difference um, just to how I feel. Like it's weird you, because obviously what you got to remember is when you wake up, your cortisol levels naturally increase anyway, don't they? You know, just through the whole waking up process, especially if you've got a fucking alarm that goes off, you know? So, um, like, you, you you know, you don't need any more, like, you don't need that kind of extra caffeine just then. Trust me, give it half an hour or 45 minutes, then have your coffee, you'll feel well better for it. Yeah, massively. So, common mistakes we're seeing 
are the assessment weeks for nutrition, low protein, high convenience or processed foods, yep. high salt, low water, low yep. fruit and veg intake, yep. high caffeine. Yep. You don't need to fix all of those in week one. And typically, we won't be, no. look to be like, right, we're going to fix everything. But if you can just start to highlight and have a look at yourself by maybe tracking your own food, okay, where am I going wrong? You can pretty much start to say, right, even if tomorrow or even if today I have an extra 20 to 30 grams of protein, I have an extra handful of veg and I'll knock out the coffee that I'm having in the evening. I'll have a tad more water. You've, you've made some big changes straight away. You're already in the right, yeah, you're on the right tracks yeah. and it'll make a big difference. I say that some people who maybe, in, you know, drop me a message on Instagram and stuff like, where shall I start? I'm like, start just by tracking your calories. Like, don't even change anything, just track them. And I promise you after a week, you'll realize where you're going wrong. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't even mention snacking to a degree, but because if you make those changes to your main meals, you won't feel the need to snack yeah. as much. You you won't. Yeah, and snacking's a big one, obviously, because again, you know, people skip breakfast because we're in a rush and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like, right, fucking work's busy, so not a chance to get a proper lunch. And what you'll tend to see there is because of that, you're not having proper meals, you're not satiating yourself, filling yourself up with the things that we've just said, your protein and your veggies, your fiber. What you'll find then is you just graze, graze on shit. And like, you know, you'll pick on the biscuits that go around the office nothing fills you up you'll get a bit of convenient food again nothing's gonna fill you up you're gonna feel even worse and it just is that kind of then it, a vicious cycle of just eating for eating sake and not getting anywhere with it so yeah bigger meals more quality and actually you'll find that you eat more food mm -hmm. so go and do it, <laughs> do it. <laughs> crack on and if you want an assessment week <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you want to see what this looks like first and get in touch drop us a message yeah <laughs> all right guys see you in the next one see you in a bit